It's time now for the toss in this last encounter in the Cricket West Indies T20 Women's Blaze Tournament, a match contested between the Guyana and the Leeward Islands. So we have Stuart Rollins, match referee, overseeing proceedings, and the two captains, Shemaine Campbell of Guyana and Amanda Edwards of Leeward Islands. And Shemaine Campbell, she has the coin. The call is heads. It's a tail. So, <laughs> Shemaine Campbell has won the toss. So, what are you doing for us tonight and why? Um, we're going to have a bowl tonight. Um, you know, looking at the game today, you know, um, the wicket uh, is, a kind of, is a good wicket for batters. But, you know, with our strength, we can um, use our strength up front tonight. And I think it's a good wicket that we're going to come out here and, and bowl out the team and just put, um, put them under pressure early and come out and get the runs that they put on the board. So, two games played today and the teams that won, Chase, did that influence your decision in any way? Yeah, you know, um, it's just a matter of fact, it's just us to come out here and bowl the ball in the right areas, you know, and um, try to restrict the team to a low total. And, so, and also some good feeling in the field will help to do that as well. Any changes to your 11 today? Yeah, we have, um, uh, these young players, you know? so we have Trisha Ardat in, we also have um, Welcome in, and so we have uh, Barkai out, and we have um, Young Greyman out as well. All right, all the best to you, Shemin. Thank you. Amanda Edwards, this is the first toss you've lost. <laughs> good luck. Uh, you're saying good luck. So what would you have done had you won the toss? We would have had the bowl first. The team decided I didn't want to bowl because we'll just put some, get them out early and then just hit off the runs. All right. Well, actually, I think they said that they're going to have a bowl first, if I can recall. No, so, yes, they're going to have a bowl first. So they're yeah, tracing. No, yes. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for that info. Um, do you have any changes in your eleven today? Yeah, we have one change. We have Sanel Willett in and um, Tiny McCoy out. All right, all right, Amanda. Well, thank you and all the best to you today. Well, that's it from the middle. Just a bit of confusion there, but Guyana they all won the toss and they decided that they are gonna have a bowl first. Welcome back to the final encounter in this Cricket West Indies Women's T20 Blaze. We've, we've had an enthralling contest so far today. First match between Windward Islands and Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago winning that contest. The second game, Jamaica winning against Barbados. This match tonight between Guyana and Leeward Islands. The Leeward Islands, they are batting first. Looks like a new opening combination. Renice Boyce. Believe that Shawnee Hector as well. Sorry, it's Melissa Clark. And Guyana, they won the toss. And they decided to have a bowl first. I am here with my co commentator, Earl Smithen. Good night, Earl. Having some coffee, I see. Yes, good evening. I'm trying to keep the eyes open. It's been a a long day, although I was not here for the first part of the day. So Sherry and Fraser with the ball in hand. It's a full toss to start. Played neatly to a square leg bond the sorry, the point boundary. And Kissia Schultz will pull it in. And two runs to start from Renee's boys. So nice start for the Leeward Islands. Yes, um Shelly and Fraser missing the length there. Uh, going to full. And just stayed square, just back out of square on the offside for two runs by boys. Um, yeah. Sorry. And of course, uh, you, as you, you said earlier on, Guyana winning the toss and uh, opting to bowl first before into chase. This one is pulled, sweetly timed from Rene's boys, and that will be the first boundary of the bat of the blade of Rene's boys. So nice start, six off two deliveries, Leeward Islands. Yes, a, a very nice shot indeed. A bit across the line, but of course this is uh, T20 cricket, and she timed it well and played it square, and picked up a four. Of course, uh, just the first over, over of the match. We are inside the power play. And uh, the decision there uh, to chase, one wonders uh, if uh, that's a better option. Well, Fraser. 
better line, better length. So the first delivery was too full, the other was too short. On that occasion, she lands it perfectly. But the decision to bowl first uh, may have been impacted by what went on today. Today, both teams that chase won. So that may have had some sort of influence in the decision making of the Guyana's team today. Perhaps, but both teams that batted first also did not bat too well. Ah, oh, there you go. Some nice lift off the surface there from Sherry and Fraser. A slip in place as well. So good captaincy from skipper Shemaine Campbell. Nice lift, but Boyce uh, picked up the line wheel and left it alone. Indeed. It's a good bit of cricket being shown here by these two teams. Both of them won their first match. That's the similarity. And continuing with the sim similarity in the second round, they both lost. So they're searching for more points tonight. A bit of wit awful and just play it to that point fielder. A bit of wit and a bit too short too. And uh, uh, looking to probably stay down to third man to pick up a single, but played it straight to backward point. And she usually hits the ball harder in these boys, but I've noticed the way she's handled this over. She's trying to play that responsible innings. And so far, she's been timing the ball well. This one badly lined, but just a single to that fine leg fielder. Seven runs off that first over. Leeward Islands, seven without loss. A good start for the Leeward Islands after being inserted. And uh, Boyce uh, getting bat on to ball and uh, seems to be in good form. She uh, would have gotten some runs in recent times. Yes, in her first game, she scored a half century against Barbados. She's the reason why they went on to win that first game. In, in the game against Trinidad and Tobago, she did not score, and you saw the result. You know, they were bowled out for 78. So tonight, I think she's taking it upon herself to take the innings really deep for them. Or That's how she started anyways, Guyana. They will have other plans in mind, and they'll want to dislodge her because they know she's a threat and the ever-reliable Fluffy and Millington has the ball in hand. She has five wickets so far in this tournament. And she has the knack of picking up a wicket early. And uh, uh, she opens from the far end. So the two fielders out, long on and mid wicket. <coughs> Millington, of course, bowling in spectacles. A bit too short to start there. Get away with it. Millington. Not too often you see bowlers bowling in inspector clothes. We have seen one or two Australian, the Australian house spinner, this Clogman. Famous spinner as well, Daniel Vittori from yeah. New Zealand. That's right. Mm, bowl with spectacles. And no one to see in Todd Murphy from Australia. Yes, Todd Murphy Mof was the well. one I was thinking in terms of. Looks to play this one down the ground. Renee's boys. Big hoik there from boys. <laughs> and certainly, if she had gotten back onto that, it certainly would have caught the ferry, the last ferry out of St. Kitts to Nevis. <laughs> and we are reminded that Saturn as well, he would have, he bowls with uh, uh, spectacles. Saturn from New Zealand. Not necessarily always, but at times. In fact, he bats in his spectacles as opposed to bowling in his spectacles. So Millington. Oh, and she's chopped it on. So Fluffy and Millington continues that wicket-taking ability early on in the power play. And Rini's boys, that's a big wicket in the context of this game. And Guyana, they have their wicket. This is the wicket that they'll probably be thinking, the first batter that they want to try to dislodge in this innings. Well, looking to be aggressive and uh, pulling across the line of that one and, and pulling it onto the stumps. And a big blow struck there by Millington. But I was saying a little earlier on that she has the knack of picking up a wicket early. In fact, uh, I'm sure there, there are a number of times that she would have picked up a wicket in the first over. Uh, not only in this T20 blaze, but in, in the uh, Super 50. And so she, she has that ability, that knack. She picked up four wickets in the first game, Fluffy and Millington, and one 
against Jamaica. It was early as well. She's continuing doing that here for Jamaica. Sorry for Guyana. Been here. It's been a long day. I've seen all the teams play. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Fluffy and Millington to continue to Shawnisha Hector, the new batter. Flashing that blade outside the half stump and a dot delivery to finish the two overs bowl and the World Islands there seven for one. That in fact was the maiden over bowl by uh, Millington and picking up a wicket so an excellent start there by Millington. And in contrast to uh, the opening bowler Shelly and Fraser of course she, Shelly and Fraser conceded seven runs in the first over. And Millington was rather miserly. So Fraser to Melissa Clark to face her first delivery. Driven nicely, but straight to the fielder. Gets around nicely, Ashmini Munisa to cut it off. So she's been struggling with her length. Hasn't quite found it. She found it at the back end of the last over to Boyce. Just need to get back on target, Sherry and Fraser. She's a threatening bowler. When she gets going, moves the ball into the right-handers as well as away. That occasion, moving it in, a huge appeal. Might be high on that occasion. Oh, there's an overthrow. Could get close to the boundary ropes here, and it does. So a poor bit of fielding from the Guyana team. A loud appeal turned down. And the fielder wasn't alert to the throw coming back in. And it just races away to the boundary. So another four for the Leeward Islands. That looked a bit too high. Yeah, it might have been too high. Look, um, seems to have struck on the uh, thigh. Probably angling down towards the leg side also. But seemed to have been a bit high. With Arford and played over the fielder at cover. Sure, it will get into the boundary now. Yes, it does. So, some intent being shown here early by the Leeward Islands team. And another boundary in this over. Yes, uh, consecutive boundaries, in fact, uh, for the Leewards. One for two just. And one uh, struck powerfully over the infield. And out towards the extra cover boundary for four. Uh, so, uh, Clark getting off the mark with the boundary. Yes, and just to remind the viewers, Leeward Islands are the only team in this tournament who has scored over 130 runs batting first. So better line there. Quick single taken. Easily done in the end. A good call between these two batters. Leeward Islands batters, though, though, though they are showing intent. Uh, from what we have seen so far, they are looking to score. They are looking to maximize the power play. So Hector, face up to Cherry and Fraser. Full driven down the ground, but not past Ashmini Munisa. Still struggling with her line and line tonight, Cherry and Fraser. Been too full at times and too short. In between, she's found that length and caused a bit of trouble to the batters, but just lacking consistency tonight. Shot played in the air. This could be her first wicket, and it's taken by Casey Schultz. So finally, something in the back for Sherry and Fraser, and a dangerous Shawnisha Hector has to walk back without scoring. It was shot. It's somewhat of a cross-batted shot, and succeeded in getting it high on the bat and into... Uh, the cover region where the catch was taken. Uh, so Leewards uh, losing wickets in, in consecutive overs. And they're now two down. Yes, 16 for two. We have seen a number of teams in this tournament <laughs> when they lose wickets in the power play, two or more. The, the innings kind of get stalled and the scoring kind of goes nowhere. Leeward Islands will hope that they don't fall into that sort of rhythm that's been happening in this tournament so far. New batter is Davia Saxena. It was right, and uh, probably uh, might have gotten big on to 
uh, Hector and beating a bit with pace and uh, looking uh, to more or less go across the line a bit. So the cross batted shot and uh, uh, she mistimed it and hold out uh, to cover. Yeah, she gets that extra bounce as well, Sharon Fraser. So yes, yeah, she didn't find her length and line, but you know that that one good delivery was always going to come in the over. Unfortunately for her, it went straight to hand. So Fluffy and Millington to continue. Driven firmly, but straight to Ashmini Munisa. Looks to throw it in. No need for that aggressive throw into the keeper. The feeler wasn't attempting a run. Uh, and I'm certain that uh, Shelly and Fraser would have been happy to uh, give up a few runs um, to get that wicket. Big shot across the line. And another four crashes into the boundary now. So Melissa Clark with the intent for Leeward Islands. Yes, we have seen intent from all the batters so far. And uh, the Leeward Islands, obviously, they are going to play their shots. It's the uh, power play. And they're looking to maximize. It's 20 now. Melissa Clark with the elevation in the batting order opening today. She would have opened before for... Uh, the Lee words. Slower that time from Fluffy and Millington. It just beats the outside edge. Yes, but she hasn't opened in this T20 blaze. So tonight she's making the most of her opportunity. She's nine off it and the center with a job to do. And she's doing that so far. Looks to go again. Oh, a missed field. So they'll hustle through for a single. She's looking to hit that ball really hard. Oh. Yes. And what I've noticed so far with the Leeward Islands, the running between the, the wickets seem to have intensified also. But we look at them, we, we, we know that uh, the running between the wicket in the past has been poor. Saxena to face her first delivery, a dot to finish off the over, five from it, 21 for two. So we're back, and after a rewarding over, Sherry and Fraser, she gets a second. Looking for a run there. It's not on for sure. The fielder, well, the bowler and the, the keeper, they were quickly on to that. So she's getting that angle now into the right-handed batter, Sherry and Fraser. Certainly looking to, to attack the stumps. Melissa Clark is looking to be aggressive. So she's hoping for that old adage of you miss, you miss, I hit. Sherry and Fraser. Yes, uh, and, and that's the correct thing to do at this point. Uh, Ball straight, uh, attack the stumps. Uh, the intention of the batters, Clark in particular, is clear. Driven again. They're looking to maximize the power play, Leeward Islands. We mentioned earlier that the most of the teams today, after losing two in the power play, they didn't they didn't look to score. But the Leeward Islands, they have a different operation going on tonight. Lofted, lofted nicely over the head of Gajlabi, and that's another boundary. So the intentions are clear by Melissa Clark. That's a nice shot, nice shot. Just uh, easing it over uh, at the infield. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, somewhat in the gap. And uh, the ball, although in the air for a long time, was out of the reach of any of the players there. The mid on, Gajnabi, and the captain, who is at uh, short mid wicket, Campbell. Driven. Trying to drive rather. Beaten for pace on that occasion. Melissa Clark. But she's played a shorter ball so far, all. Well, uh, it <laughs> seems as though we are seeing T20 cricket for the first time today. Um, today we, <laughs> we saw uh, the batters afraid to play shots 
especially inside the power play. And we know what the result Shot was. Shot and pulled. Make that another boundary. Melissa Clark on fire tonight for the Leeward Islands. That's a wonderful shot. It was shot and she uh, swiveled into a wicket and pulled it back out of square all along the ground and uh, down to the boundary for four. Wonderful shot indeed. And even better so the result. It's not usual um, that Skipper use Cherry and Fraser for a third over in the power play. Nicely walked into the gap. She's looking for a single. It's not on. It's a good field in there by <coughs> player at square leg. So we get those teams to you. No. The Leeward Islands. The players out are Tonya Martin, Tinetta McCoy, and Therese Parker. Just looking at a few spectators there uh, in the uh, southern stand. Uh, of course, the Leeward Island seem to have a bit of support here this evening. Seen a few more than we've seen in the past. Yes, and just to close things off, there the Guyana team, Barco is out, Retty Meyer, and Rillian Agreement. Fuller delivery, playing nicely for a single Saxena. She recognizes what's happening and she's decided I'm just going to get off strike and get Melissa Clark, who's hitting the ball quite nicely, back on strike for this last over of the power play. It's good to see the Leewards playing good, aggressive cricket, though. Uh, they have been the underdogs in this tournament, but they have beaten the defending champions, Barbados. And I'm pretty certain that uh, their camp must be cock a hoop at the moment. Looking for a quick single. No, says Divya Saxena. And when one takes into consideration the sort of preparation they would have had coming into this tournament, one would uh, would would think that they would have done uh, pretty well. Oh, edge straight to slip, and Campbell puts it down. So another big moment in the game. We've seen a number of battles that's been given chances go on to score big. Is this the same? Is this going to be the same result for Melissa Clark tonight? Straightforward catch there to Campbell, the captain. Walked into the onside. They hustled through for a quick single. A misfield again. A shot made wicked on this occasion. As a new player in tonight. That's Yonet. Welcome. Pressure being brought to be there and welcome. Uh, this is from Wood. Two more balls remaining in the power play. Walk straight to her this time. Last delivery in the power play remaining. Leeward Islands. Can they finish it off with a boundary? Looking for a quick single. She's been sent back. She's halfway down the track. She makes it back. So a bit of miscommunication to end things off between these two battles. And at the end of the power play, the Leeward Islands, they are 31 for two. She never seemed to be on there. It was played straight to the field. Uh, it's not too far away. And uh, in the end, sent back. Saxena just charging down. But we'll see a bowling change from uh, this end. It's end of the power play, and Ashmini Munisa is about to be introduced into the attack. And we talk about this word intent all. And yes, we're saying Melissa Clark, she has intent to score. You know, intent to score isn't just boundary hitting. It's also, you know, looking to be busy at the crease. You know, playing with the field and looking for the singles. Minimizing as many dots as possible. And we s we're seeing that, yes, she's trying to get the big runs. But they're also looking for uh, areas to get those singles. They're looking for any opportunity for a misfield as well. So smart cricket being played by the Leeward Islands so far. Ashmini Munisa into the attack showing some respect by Melissa Clark Melissa Clark is very tall and she has also been using a reach uh, to get to the pitch of the deliveries oh she tries to go across the line and she's been bold middle stump uprooted so Ashmini Munisa introduced into the attack 
pick up that wicket for the Guyana, for the Guyana team. Yes, a good blow struck there. She, she was looking dangerous. And they're uh, going across the line of that one and being bold. As we look at it again. The runs are coming quickly. The wickets are also coming quickly. Yeah, she was looking to keep the tempo. Melissa Clark. Shmini Munisa, a very smart operator. She's kept it pretty straight. Kimberly Anthony is a new batter in. So they're still looking to go at it, Leeward Islands. It, 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 it really makes sense, though. It, you can't just relax and think you can poke it around and build up dot ball pressure and then try to defend a total a, a total of 60 odd well you, you have to <laughs> I was score just the runs you, you'll <laughs> end up with 63 <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> like you know, Barbados earlier on the projected score now is 98 i'm sure the leeward islands they'll be thinking 100 or 120 at least is what they should be looking to get from here still some common sense that must uh, must prevail though they uh, should be selective at the same time but uh, not allow themselves to be back down Yes, certainly. It, it comes with picking your moments and adjusting to the situation. Now you are three batters down. Um, Melissa Clark, who's hitting the ball quite nicely, she's been dismissed. This is where you can look to walk things around and keep the scoreboard ticking by way of singles. And then if a bad ball comes, you put it away just to reassess, reassess, the, situ reassess the situation that you're in. And then you still have batters like Amanda Amanda Edwards and Jazara Craxton to come down the ground straight to Sherry and Fraser and she puts it down. <laughs> so Kimberly Anthony has a life early. At not. <laughs> Poor uh, feeling that time. It went straight to her and it was in and out. Easiest of catches. That mid off. Kimberly Anthony seems to have a lot of fans in tonight. Oh, and she's bold. Ashmini Munisa just says, I'll do it. I'll just hit the stumps. No problems. You didn't hold on to my catch. I'll just hit the stumps. That's okay. So she gets another one bold this time. Kimberly Anthony goes back without scoring. So, so far for the Guyana team, the drop chances hasn't hurt them. Yes, and uh, uh, Anthony seemed to have played on the wrong line and she seemed to have closed the face of her bat. Uh, and uh, I was her poles were knocked back, not really playing the line of the ball, but uh, closing the face and, and playing down the wrong line and being beaten and bowled. Yeah, so that's a double wicket made in over by Munisa. 31 for 4 now, Leeward Islands. New batter in. Captain, in fact. Captain, Captain Amanda, Amanda Edwards. Has a lot to do here for her team. The position they're in now. The issue now is the wickets column. They're 31 for 4. What those wickets have done, it has slowed the uh, scoring rate. It has now dropped from uh, 7 to 4.43. Lots of time left still though. Lots of overs left. And uh, they need a partnership here. So a new bowler introduced, replacing Fluffy and Millington, is Shinita Grimond. Looks to walk across the line. Starts a bit too straight. And it crashes into the boundary. So four runs to Divya Saxena. Yes, sir. Signal from umpire Maria Ebert, Abbott, so after bat it appears. Sorry. Yes, a good boundary there for the Leewards. They uh, will be looking to continue to score. Work with me, Graham, work with me. Let's pull it this time. Should be one. Pretty similar start this for Shinita Grimman from that end in the game against Jamaica. 
He was starting it a bit too straight and it was angling down the leg side. Got called a call wide a few times in that innings as well. She needs to adjust quickly here. Already seen delivery, ill directed delivery going for four. So one is pummeled down the ground, <coughs> but it'll just be a single. Good single, though. And, uh, of course, Lauren has been pushed back early. Of course, the Leeward Islands had an early onslaught. And so, an easy single. It's walked into the legs. They're going to leg side. They get a quick single in the end. It's a really nice batting from these two. Looking yes. to keep the scoreboard ticking. Good running, but the was a slight bit of hesitation uh, between these two. But in the end, they got home safely. Seven runs are four balls so far in this over. Two balls remaining. Walk straight to short mid-wicket. Naya Latchman. wonder when we'll see her introduced into the attack tonight. Came in a bit late in that Jamaica game. Picked up two wickets. Heading down leg, but still hasn't been able to find her line in this over. So 38 for four after eight overs. Ashmini Munisa to continue. What a misdirected delivery, played nicely off the pads. Diving effort from the fielder on the boundary. They're coming back for a third. They get it quite comfortably in the end. Bit of hesitation again by these two battles. They were coming in the middle to have a word, so that's good. That's good from these two. Oh, it's been signal four actually by umpire holder. So that's four runs there on Tefia Saxena. So the punches are really coming for the Leeward Islands as we look at the replay. Nicely turned into the onside. Stacy, what we are seeing here with the leeward is, is that they have been able to keep the scoreboard moving. And uh, we certainly looked at some cricket today where, uh, for most parts, the teams batting for us were stagnated. Driven for me, but back straight back to the bowler yes and i'm sure they watched the games today and saw what what transpired so they know what sort of total whipped across the line but straight to skipper shemaine campbell they know what sort of target they want to give guyana to chase down and they cannot do that by being stalled especially in the middle over middle overs Pulled away this time, but there's protection on the onside <laughs> boundary. They, oh, it's a misfield. <laughs> Did that go 4 4? Yes. It's been signaled. So another 4 signal. <laughs> Poor feeling there. Uh, that looks like welcome down there. Yes, young, young player, Janet, welcome in that for her. For our first 20 game in the series. Not today. a good welcome by any means. The second <laughs> time she. Has misfielded for the evening. Tries to go across the line. This time, the <coughs> error is caused by the keeper. She was blindsided by the batter trying to play across the line. As in fact, umpire holder has signaled runs off the bat. So it appears there was a bit of on the edge there. 
So three fours in that over. Keeper should have stopped that door. Um, the wicket keeper Mangro. And the ball ran away for four, so <laughs> runs flowing here for the Leeward Islands. The 50 has come off, off nine overs. So 13 runs off that over. 51 for four now from Leeward Islands. And this is really good from the Leeward Islands. The intent hasn't stopped at all, even when the wickets were tumbling. Of course, there's Claxton to come still. And she has had some runs in the Super 50, very capable batter. <coughs> so, three feelers out, long on. Mid wicket and square leg. Just walking it smartly into the onside. The run probably was on, but both batters weren't clear on whether that was a run. But she's she, she since she's come out, Saxena, she's been walking that vacant area, just using the spin and turning it into the onside. And there's an eagle easy single to be had there. So nice walk from her. Again, she does that, and this time they come through for the single. So that's what we've been talking about when we mentioned the term intent to score. And these two batters are displaying that quite well so far in the last, in the last three overs. Very similar shot to the uh, previous delivery. And she did not take the single then, uh, but opted to do it this time. In fact, it might have been a bit uh, closer to that short mid-wicket fielder. Goes over the head this time in the gap. Don't think it'll have the legs to get to the boundary. Good bit of fielding by Gajnabi on the long arm boundary and keeps it to two. So Leewards continue to mutter on. Must be uh, some cause for concern by the guy in his team. It's the 20 Blaze has been a low scoring affair and uh, the guy I would not like to see um, the scoring get out of hand. One is fuller, almost yoking herself there, Amanda Edwards. Good result for Guyana. It's a dot. So two balls remaining before we have a drinks break. One is shot, it's pulled in the air. There's a fielder coming under it, and she holds on. So Amanda Edwards, just before the water break, falls to a sh from a short delivery from Shanita Grimman, who had her hand on her head. She can't believe how luck there she got away with that. Yes, and hard at uh, taking a good run in catch. And uh, we have seen some easy catches going down, uh, but she certainly uh, took that one well always seem to have had it under control so the leewards losing another wicket and uh, just at the water break and we'll take a water break also
Claxton, the new batter, is the uh, is at the crease now. Comes in at number seven. She has won the livery left in this over. So wickets falling, runs flowing. Yes, one delivery remaining to close out the tenth over. So ten done, fifty-four for five. Uh, the leewards. That's a good wicket to get there for Guyana at that time. The way these two were going was really looking. Like they were gonna take it deeper for the Lewa, for Leeward Islands. Bowling change. But I was I was really impressed with the way they went about it. You know, they were looking to score, drop and run, walked into the gap and occasionally had the, the, the boundaries as well. So it's good good clear plans by Leeward Islands. The new bowler. Now that means brought into the attack. It's the uh, one who took the catch. She should be full of confidence coming into bowl now. She seems to be bowling off a uh, relatively long run, perhaps uh, bowling right down medium paces. And uh, Saxena is the batter. That it has a short third run backward point cover sweeping, extra cover mid off, long on on the boundary, mid wicket back on the boundary, short mid wicket, and a short backward square. Easy single down to uh, long on, Gajna B is fielding. Claxton will receive a second delivery. Left under. Over pitch. And, and uh, Shelly and Fraser is moving to right field and sends a uh, return to Hardet at the bowler's end, the non striker's end. But Claxton gets off the mark with a single. Yeah, good movement by Sherry and Fraser. And still a pretty accurate throw. Although she was off balance and on her knees on the ground. Just bouncing over the stumps. Out of the bot to run. Over pitch once more. And uh, Pommel down to uh, long on for a single by Saxena. Yeah, she's been two falls so far. Young Trisha Hardat. She's been given a chance. Hasn't gone for a boundary as yet. And she wants to keep it that way. Edges, it's going down towards the third man boundary pursued. And uh, it ricochets from uh, the hands of the fielder down there. And uh, able to pick up two. Yes, good work from Welcome. She had a few misfields tonight, but on that occasion, doing well to pull it back. Getting the edge that time, had that. Nice chase by Welcome to, to keep that to two. <laughs> Rather appeal. hopeful there. <laughs> yeah, it was a faint appeal, but heading down, and I heard some bat as well. So everything wrong with that. 
in she terms of an so LGBT shelter. Leg, as a matter of fact. Yes, there you go. That too. So everything wrong. <laughs> so today not in favor of the bowler. Yeah, but she's young. She's starting out and Over the pitch once more into the mid wicket region. There's hustling back for the second. And uh, gets there. But a stronger throw might have forced some problems for Saxena. Overcomes to an end. Yeah, seven runs coming off it. Trisha had that. Probably got away with a few deliveries in that over. But I think she'll take six, seven runs. Few spectators in uh, more than normal for this type of uh, cricket, and I know there would be some spectators also in the members' pavilion. They would be out of our view, so it's good to see one or two people coming in to look at the leaders and probably uh, give them their support. The police officers, of course, in. Yes, yeah, some very strong support for the Leeward Islands tonight. Heard a lot of encouragement, especially when Kimberly Anthony. Came and in, went into bat. So it's Gajna B from the far end. I think it, it's going to be the Latchman. In yes. Latchman, in fact. Naya Latchman, a young leggy. She operated at the commentary booth end in the last game, picked up two wickets there. Tonight, the captain is bringing her from the further end. Four fielders out, long on cover, mid wicket, and square leg. Starts well. Right on target, Saxena defends. She has a lot of control for a young leg spinner. It's a craft that many of us say it's a difficult skill. She has a lot of control. Pulled, in fact, tugged down to long on for a single by Saxena. See uh, square leg backwards, square going back on the boundary for the left handed uh, Claxton. There's a mid wicket on the boundary, uh, long on. And the cover sweeping. Claxton is just pushing into the offside. Uh, straight to Munusa who feels a point and there's no run. And drives and uh, Munisa smartly to a left <laughs> fields and almost uh, overbalances, <laughs> uh, but regains control of her movement. Stan is pushing up to extra cover, welcome is around smartly. Uh, to a right. Prevents any run. Up to middle of this time. Can't score. So, Latchman coming on, keeping things tight here. So the over comes to an end. 12 done.
So all that will continue uh, from the media center end. Pleasant Thursday evening here at Warner Park, Mrs. Aaron. It's been a long day of cricket. We have had uh, two matches completed so far. Jamaica winning. Yeah, Trinidad and Tobago winning early run. <coughs> she just shot backward square going back to a fine length, but right back on the boundary. Over pitch and put away. Four runs, good shot. It's too full from Trisha Harder. She got away with a few of those in the over before this occasion. It was ill directed and Divya Saxena just waited on it nicely and placed it in the gap. So it's been good from the leewards though. They they have not allowed uh, uh, too many bad deliveries to go by. Uh, they have been finding the uh, boundary with regularity. Keeper is up to the stump for Hardat. Sluish medium, of course. Over pitch once more. This one seemed to have been taken from center stump and uh, down to square leg for a single. Uh, just slightly back out of square. But had she missed that one, uh, she could have been goners. Yeah, it wasn't as full as the previous delivery. It was dying on her a bit. Luckily for her, she was able to get a bat, some bat on it, and played it to that fielder at deep mid wicket. Here we go again, missing a run once more hard up. See some spectators uh, on the side there looking on. So <laughs> it's good to see our spectators out this evening. With uh, some of the players from the Windmill Islands and Barbados team. Nicely steered down to short third man, but can't score. Well, Stacy, you would have played uh, uh, for the Winwoods. You seem to know quite a few of the players also. Yes, I played with. Nice drive, could get a couple here. In fact, they settled early for a single as it's played down to backward point. Yes, I've played with all of the players that's here, but except with the exception of um, Selena Ross and Amaya Gilbert. Ross is making her debut this year, and Amaya Gilbert made her debut last year. Last year is when I could say I hung up my boots, Earl Smithen. Well, misses the run once more. Seems to be a trend here for her at. Well, you're still looking quite young and sprightly, so <laughs> who knows you? Uh, <laughs> it just might take down, <laughs> take down those boots again. Nicely worked into the onside for a single by Saxena. Yeah, she's done that a lot in this inning so far. 69 for 5. Not a, not a lot of batters have done that enough. To the to the off spinners in particular, that gap is usually open. So just play it with nice off hands, play it nice and lead, and use your wrist to work it into that on side. And the single is always on. Saxena so is 22 from uh, 19, and uh, uh, certainly she has kept above a run of ball, and she has quietly done so too. She has. Put away some bad deliveries. Mm -hmm. 
the last man to continue same field employed here to Divya Saxena for Latchman as she had in the previous over. Single up to Logan. In fact, they're looking for second one. Saxena is, but decided against it in the end. So Lee was into the 70s, 70 for 5. Scoreboard ticking over. They have lost two kids, but the runs are coming. It all depends on what sort of total we think will be a competitive one against Guyana. Notice for Claxton, the, the, well, there's a mid-off and there's a, a long on back on the boundary. She has been quite so far, though, Claxton. Swings, misses, loud appeal, finger goes up, and Claxton is on her way. Played across the line of a pretty straight delivery from, yeah, that's crashing into middle. Pretty straight delivery from Naya Latchman. So the frustration mm. as she showed, as she was trying to get at the bowling, wasn't able to. And unfortunately, picking a wrong delivery to go big against Naya Latchman. Well, I was just saying that um, she has been pretty quiet, and just as I said that, um, she decided to go for a big wild swing and missing it completely and being like before. And the willet goes to the crease, and the will. In fact, it's um, Basca that yes. goes to the crease. A 70 for 6, Leeward Islands. Show some of the spectators that we would have seen earlier on a bit disappointed. Claxton, of course, being um, a local girl, and I'm sure a number of spectators would have come here to uh, look at the bat this evening. But uh, she did not last too long, and she did not get too many. Short and pulled away, but straight to backward square. Pick up and throw by Harrod. And uh, in the end, the battle safely home for a single. And Basker uh, gets off the mark immediately. Basker, of course, so we think originates from India by uh, the way of the U.S., Bit of bounce there, but she's getting some runs down to third man. And in fact, two as uh, Campbell goes after it, picks up and sends a very good return. Right into the goals of the keeper. Wonderful bit of fielding there by, by the captain, Shimane Campbell. Yeah, got some bounce there, as you mentioned, but no slip in place. At an edge, just in, when wound up in an awkward position, Divya Saxena. Luckily for her, it was an edge that went for two. Total delivery that time by Naya Latchman. So, uh, Lee Woods continue to uh, get some runs. They have lost a few wickets, six of them in fact. Uh, another six overs to go. And uh, uh, We'll see. In fact, how that will continue from this end. We've watched two other games played out, play out on the same surface today. So Trinidad and Tobago bowlers get some turn. Leeward Island spinners. Leeward Island, sorry. Their spinners were in the game as well. We saw 80, 81 runs being a pretty competitive contest. And later on, Barbados only managed to get to 63. What sort of total do you think 
to be a competitive one for the Leeward Islands, keeping their bowlers in mind. They have two spinners of their own, but they largely operate with a pace bowling attack. Pulled into the onside uh, for at least one. He was need to get anywhere close to 130, 140 uh, to give themselves a, a good chance in this game. This certainly is not a, a 80 runs pitch in, in 20 overs. It's a good track. Might have punched into the offside for a single. We've seen a bit of bounce. There's has been slow turn, but you've not really seen anything on towards on, on this pitch. Quick single as it's turned down to square leg. A good one too. Yeah, she was quite lucky to get some bat on that one, Bashka. Because had she missed that, certainly may have seen Ayana Holder raising that finger. She was right across the stump. That was a pretty straight delivery. On the size the ball operating from this this end. Pulled away. And pulled away nicely and goes for four. Down to square leg. Good shot. Uh by Saxena. Four runs. That's too straight too too short by Ashmini Munisa. Cannot afford to miss your length on this pitch. Certainly not. It's a good track. Certainly 80 for 6 now in Leeward Islands. This is good positive stuff here by the Leeward Islands. They are not going to uh, die wandering. And we, we have seen that intent from the word go. And uh, so far they have managed to get to some 80 runs. As opposed to hanging around and being bowled out, bowled out in 20 overs for, 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 for 75. One ball to close out this over. Seven runs off it. Leeward Islands there, 80 for six up to 15 overs. And Saxena has gone into the 30s. She's in fact uh, 30 runs. And uh, a good little knock here so far by uh, Saxena. In fact, she's got no 30 runs from uh, just some 26 deliveries. So, another five overs to go. Uh, Leeward Islands perhaps looking to accelerate a bit at this point. Notice Willett has come into the side, but Willett is not bowling. And she's batting no down in the order. Get it right, lad. Had a very torrid time last year. She, in fact, was captain of this uh, Leeward Islands team. And I think uh, best score in the last year's tournament, both uh, disciplines struck on the pad, but that one seemed to have been missing leg in the T20 Blaze and the 50 over format. If we look at the replay. Uh, really missing leg. <coughs> Well, it certainly had a tough time. Had a top score of uh, 16 runs in the air uh, to Shelly and Fraser and caught. Uh, so Basca is on away. Caught off the bowling of Latchman by Shelly and Fraser at mid off. And the Leeward Islands lose their seventh wicket. Yes, Basca looking to up the tempo. Looking to play across that one. It is a leg spinner. And just getting a top edge that goes straight to. Sherry and Fraser at mid off. Easy catch for her. It was a rather lame attempt though by Basco. Uh, uh, she just pushed at that one. And they're getting the top edge and going to uh, mid off where she was caught. She but, is it's a but it's 80 for 7. Yeah, she is a pretty dominant onside player. She was always going to be looking to play across that one. That's her strength. So the matchup. With the leg spinner would certainly work in favor of the fielding team. So will it? 
Willet know. He was saying about Willet um, Earl. What were you saying about Willet in terms of our schools? Well, she had year? a tarry time last year. Pretty tarry time. Uh, and she, of course, was captain of the team and uh, uh, hardly troubled the scorers. Only got into double figures in one of the T20 Blaze matches. She is capable to, with the bat. She's batting pretty late down the order. They're 80 for 7 now. Guyana, they'll be thinking to get these last three wickets as quickly as possible. Let would be hoping to get off the mark first. That's a first mission out there. It's been four dots in this over. Wicket as well. Looking to finish well, sending cover back on the boundary. My goodness, she's pulling across the line of this one and missing it completely. I think she might be better off looking to work one into the offside and and getting off the mark. And turn there for young Naya Lachman. Lachman has shown good control though. In the air, uh, Latchman diving to a right, to a left, oh, sorry. Uh, just cutting it off. So good over there by Latchman. Look at it. Yes, to the left of Latchman. It was in the air for some time, but a rather difficult one. And be able to get hands to it. Latchman with a maiden over, the 16th over of the innings. Being a maiden, really impressive stuff from the young Naya Latchman. Just bowled three overs, picked up two wickets for just five runs. She was introduced at a time when the Leeward Islands were picking up with their scoring rate. She's really stalled their innings. She so. will it call in for a new headgear. In fact, dispensing her headgear. So Flaffy and Millington being reintroduced from the commentary booth end. Divya Saxena is batting well. Just needs someone to stay with her. Pulled away and pulled down to square leg, just a single. think though they need to uh, try and accelerate at this point though uh, the leewards uh, just another four was left after this one <coughs> Campbell patrol in the bin wicket boundary driven and will get to run yeah, she's off the mark, will it? Must be a happy camper. Met, of course, uh, from that uh, famous family in Nevis. Father, of course, uh, being the first uh, test player from the Leeward Islands. Quickly threw for a single. Yeah, we've seen that a lot today from Divya Saxena. Scored a lot of runs right there in that area. Let's drop and run, walking it to the onside. Willet is steering down the short third man, can't score. Uh, go straight to uh, welcome. Drives and gets a single. Charging through, and uh, had that one hit. In fact, she's getting more runs here. And uh, back for a second run, but that return to the non strikers end, if it had struck, it could have been pretty close. Yeah, it was a pretty tight single. Cherry and Fraser is a really good fielder. He just needed to hit. And send a low will it. We have well seen herself short there. Ball traveled quickly to Fraser, and she picked up well. And threw at the stumps and missed them. The ball ran down to uh, long leg. 
They allow the second run. So one more ball to close out this over. Five runs off it so far. Question now for the Leeward Islands is can they get up to 100, 110 in the next three overs? Well, they need to be swinging for the hills now. Pulls and misses. And goes through her legs and picks up a single. Uh, so one more. It's a leg by. In fact, it seemed to have brushed the pads. And uh, just another run there to the leewards. Just coming from the inner thigh and going past the keeper uh, for a single. off our spell. Willett uh, stays it out to cover and gets a single. Saxena has been there for some time. She's set. Uh, she should be looking to uh, clear the boundary and uh, uh, she should be thinking in terms of her options uh, where she could uh, pick up some runs. Extra cover is short. Mid off is short. Pulls a full delivery out towards mid wicket. And uh, they're going back for the second run. The return goes to the keeper's end. The appeal goes up and the finger goes up also. And the Willett is run out. The very calm Naya Latchman. Look how calm she was when she just when she dislodged those bills. She knew all she had to do was get the ball in her hand, then try to rush it and just out by a long way. Just take the bills off really calm youngster but i think they were doing the right thing though the leeward island batters looking to put pressure on uh the fielder but a good bit of field in there uh and uh, as you rightly said latchman tied it up quite well took it calmly and broke the stumps I've seen a number of opportunities in this like that in the tournament. She kept her composure. She knows she's in control. Once she collects it clean, she did that just well and dislodged the bills. Sure was a good one too on the yeah, bounce. It was. Yeah. So getting Divya Saxena rightly said it's very important from here on out. She's a set batter. And if you are to get to 100 or more, she's more than likely the player that you want to be facing the rest of the deliveries. So seems a bit of a break here. Saxena seems to uh, be in some stress here, some distress. In fact, they are signaling towards the uh, pavilion. Seem to have hurt herself. She's down on her knees. Seems a bit winded. And we'll receive some attention. In fact, she's. Um, getting some liquid, I'm taking some liquid on board with fueling. And uh, of course, we had that unfortunate incident earlier on when Connor was struck. And uh, don't know if um, you would have had an update on a condition. We're hoping that she's doing well. Had to be stretched off. Uh, blow from uh, shot from a uh, Maclean, a powerfully struck back. And she was looking to take evasive action and seemed to have been struck in on the face. So uh, Saxena is still there down on her knees on one knee and uh, being administered to. So Stacey, and I don't know if you would have had an update on Cornell, but uh, we'll get to you eventually on that. If not, 
uh, during this match. Uh, no update just yet, but I keep checking in, so as soon as I get some information about Carnell, I'll be sure to deliver the news. But we're hoping that she's, she's, she's doing well, though. So we'll continue. Saxine is ready to go. She's on 33. Latchman is ready also. Tossed up. And uh, driven there to a short mid wicket. Finds welcome in the way there's no run. So Latchman, two for seven. Very flattering figures. Yeah. Drives in the air. Uh, drops the shot of Campbell uh, at backward point. Uh, moving in. So, uh, just the one run and the one wicket in this over so far. Uh, wicket being a run out. Very good over. Pulled out towards wicket, wind wicket in the air. And uh, uh, dropping short there. Yes. Of shoots. Uh, Almost um, overrunning it, but she got, it got really close to her in the end. She almost overran it, and then she had to go back a bit and wasn't able to get a hold on of it. But luckily, it did not go into the boundary. So, just three runs coming from this over so far. One more delivery to close it out. Played into the offside. Uh, just a single there, thinking of a second there, going back, the return comes into the keeper's end. And the mango does not break the stumps. <laughs> uh, so, two more to the score. They actually won shot, so. <laughs> uh, so, one run, <laughs> just uh, for all that effort. Yeah, so the end of a very impressive display by young Naya Latchman showed great control as she does usually when she comes on to bowl. Four overs to four eleven. Yeah. Ten actually, because because of the short run. Ten, yes, uh, ten runs. Uh, Ninety-one for eight. Two overs to go. Uh, can the Leewards get to one hundred? Still below par. Uh, but nevertheless, we have seen teams uh, being bowled out for uh, 63 and 81. So who knows? So 91 for 8. Two overs remaining. New batter Rosel Liebord on strike. Mission 1, get Divya Saxena on strike. I think that will be... Well, she's thinking otherwise. Um, she's swinging. And swinging for the hills. And uh, in fact, it's a bye as it goes down to short third man. And, uh, well, don't mind if she swings for the hills and connects. But given the state of the game, two wickets in hand, you want to bat out the rest of your overs. And uh, she's playing at and missing outside the off stump. Saxena's trigger, trigger movement takes her right across her stump. Right across the off stump. Pushes into the offside. Saxena needs to look for the boundary here. Just with just another uh, uh, nine deliveries left. That's what they hope she should be doing now. Two dots in this over. Drives powerfully. Uh, but straight down to Langan, just a single. <coughs> Two deliveries left in this over. Swings and gets it out to midwicket for a single. Inching towards um, 100. Will that be enough? You never know. We'll have to wait and see. Another 
single. And uh, the guy now wouldn't be happy with this. Singles are not going to hurt them. As we come down to uh, the final over. And uh, the Leeward Islands needing a, a couple of bounds, you see. Yeah, 95 for 8 now, Leeward Islands. Shanita Grimond is going to bowl the last over. Last over for her team, Diana. The Saxena is on strike. She, she is the one who has been there for some time. She's 38 from 37. An opportunity to get a half century here. Uh, she needs another 12 runs and uh, that will do the Ali Good Island scores good too. If she could pick up at least 12 runs in this over. So the four fielders out long on, long off, mid wicket, and square leg. Swinging and swinging down to uh, the boundary, <laughs> down to the long leg boundary for four. Good start to the over. Okay, so Grimon once more, not not being able to execute that line just straight a bit there nicely done by saxena give it have to keep in mind as well saxena walks across her stump her trigger movement takes her all the way across her off stump so senator grimman needs to adjust her line to her because what we, what may be a good delivery to a batter who stands regularly on their their leg stump for example or their middle stump might just be a delivery in her arc. So she has to adjust her line to Fiel. Saxena. Field has been adjusted though. There's a short back. So square she's bowled. That's it right there. That is where you need to be bowling to her. So really smart thinking from Shanita Grimman. Recognizing the trigger movement all the way across the off stump. Adjusting her line. And it pays off for her in the end. So yes, smart uh, bowling. Yes, it was. It was. And... Uh, uh, it lets in the last battle for the Leeward Islands. And uh, it's uh, Cheyenne Moses. Uh, so 99 for 9 will the Leewards get to 100. I was giving uh, Saxena another 12 runs to get to a 50. She just got four of those uh, 12 runs. <laughs> and uh, she got to 42. So uh, it's going to be a pretty happy camp, Leeward Islands. They'll take a hundred for sure if they can get that. So ninety-nine for nine. Cheyenne Moses, a new batter. Good to see her as well. It's one of the feelers that went off injured in that game against Trinidad and Tobago. She really rushed out there. And, uh, gets a quick single, fumbled by welcome. And in just a single. A uh, hundred comes up with that single. Yes. hundred up. One might say it's a psychological figure. Don't think when Guyana elected to bowl first, they were thinking they would be chasing a hundred. I'm certain they'll be thinking, they would have been thinking they'll get them under that. Going back for the second run, the return goes to the uh, bowler. And she drops it. Grimman drops it. A good return. Uh, but good aggressive running also. And the batter's coming back for the second run. So 102 for 9. And uh, throughout this inning, uh, the leeward certainly has shown intent. Swung in the air down to Langan. Uh, just a single. One bounce to the fielder. So one delivery left in this over, in this over, one delivery left in this innings, one legal delivery, of course. And it is been bowled by Grimman. And she's bowling to Moses, who steps out, swings um, to extra cover, goes through for a single. The turn goes to the non strikers, and Grimman drops it. And the Leewards finishes on 104 uh, for nine. Of their 20 overs. 
So Guyana has a chase on tonight. They have to get 105 in their 20 overs. It's below six, for six runs and over. So when we come back, Guyana has to get 105. So we'll be back shortly after this innings break.
Yes, welcome back. After the innings break, I'll start you off with some good news. I just heard from our co-commentator, Shakira Selman, that um, Chanel Co some Shamilia Connell, she's doing okay. They didn't give me any details, but they said that she is okay. So that's some good news to start here. The Leeward Islands, they posted 104. Guyana, they need to get 105 to pull off victory. Opening bowler, Shanisha Hector, has the ball in hand. She's starting things off. And batters for Guyana, Shabika Gajnabi, about to take strike, and Shanita Grimman at the non-striker's end. Earl? Yes, uh, good to hear that uh, uh, Connell is uh, doing quite well. And uh, uh, that's no... Well, uh, at least we, we do not know the extent of the injury, but the good thing is that she's doing well. And uh, uh, with this game here, Hector would be looking to uh, keep it tight for the uh, leewards and perhaps pick up some early wickets. Uh, 105 needed to win. Uh, not a large score by any means, but we have seen uh, some low scores here today. So who knows? Oh, it seems like I startled you there. <laughs> you immediately jumped in. <laughs> I was about to ask you, Shanisha Hector runs in to bowl. Nice bounce off the surface. Gajnabi off the mark. I was about to ask you about the approach in using Hector to open the bowling. In the last game, they opted to go for Kimberly Anthony. On this occasion, they, they're going with their experienced bowler, Shanisha Hector. Yes, I, I think it's a better move. Um, she is more experienced. Uh, she certainly has been playing club cricket in in uh, Australia and we've seen uh, so far this season she uh, has the ability to take wickets. It's unfortunately for her. She's, been, she's made her, she actually played for a West Indies team. You know, she has a West Indies cap on her belt but fortunately for her she's been in and out with injury. Wasn't a part of the tournament, I think I recall last year or year before as well. This year, she's looking fit and firing with bat and ball. Big full heading down the leg. Bashka with the gloves in and on tonight. Well, uh, uh, the Leeward Islands certainly they have been uh, playing a bit of musical cheers with their keeper. We have seen voice. We've seen Parker. In fact, I think Parker is left out of the uh, side this evening. Yes, they're using Boyce as that other spinner in this lineup. Just once, it shot and played straight to cover. Grimman feels as if she missed out there. Beaver Island's on their toes there. They're uh, they're very lively out there. They are buoyant. They, they, they probably sense that they could uh, uh, win this one here. And they're looking to get an early uh, breakthrough. Hear the effort from Shanisha Hector in her delivery. That grunt. Fielders really attacking the, the balls aggressively. Uh, looking to prevent that single. It's the last ball is forced over from Hector. It's fuller, chipped in the air, but not close to any fielder. They come back for two. And the first over is completed. Guyana, three without loss. Yes, an interesting first over. The batters, for most part, are uh, finding the fielders. And uh, Ghana starting fairly quietly. Just picking up some three runs in that over. Uh, but uh, the Leeward Islands, uh, they continue to show intent. And, uh, uh, you know, sensing that perhaps they could win this one, even though the uh, score might be, that might be a bit small. Uh, just another 102 runs needed by Ghana from 114 deliveries uh, to win this one. But the words 
looking for the early breakthrough. So Jazara Claxton, the ball in hand, some changes in the field, Amanda Edwards, can't say that's a slip, she's very close to the third man circle. Uh, some may call it a, a, a fly <laughs> slip. <laughs> yeah, it's a fly slip, fly slip indeed, very straight as well. So Claxton to Gajnabi. Width given. Can't find the gap though. And that's okay with oh. Gajnabi. For the leewards, uh, uh, it's critical for them to uh, try and pry out, uh, prize out Gajnabi early and uh, uh, Perhaps Campbell also. These are two key battles for Guyana. Goes down the ground. In the air, drop. Yeah, all the chance given to Gajanabi by boys. Now you were just talking about. The World Islands getting rid of Gajnabi as early as possible. She looks to get the team off to a flyer. Gajnabi. There you go. Right after a drop catch. Robin Salt into the wounds. A boundary. Yes, and a good shot too. All along the ground. Out to mid-wicket for four. Dangerous player Gajnabi. So be hoping she can see the back of Gajanavi pretty soon. It was above her head. But she sh certainly should have held on, misjudged it completely. Quick given, can't get close enough to that one to play it away. Well done, well done, well done. So, it's without loss, the second over. She's giving width and she's bowling a bit short outside the off stump. Uh, there's no protection on the offside. Uh, there's, there's a third man back on the boundary. But no one's sweeping at cover. So a docked delivery. Already created the chance, Claxton. She created the chance with a, a slightly fuller length. She's opting to go shorter ever since. Nicely bold to close out the over. Four from it. Diana seven without loss. Yes, uh, two overs gone. Seven without loss. Uh, if Lee Woods uh, are going to give themselves a good chance to uh, win this one, they certainly would have to hold on to everything that comes their way. But Claxton, uh, guilty of bowling a bit too short and too wide uh, of the off stump. And in fact, she was pulled through mid wicket for a boundary. Hector had a fairly good start. Three ones coming from her first over. She's going to continue to Grimmon. Two fielders out, third man and fine leg. Oh. That was tailing in. It was. It, it, it was. A shortish door and outside the off stump. 
hasn't been able to execute those short pitch deliveries Grimman missing or uh, playing straight to the fielders bit puller this time wasn't too sure about the run in those two eventually will come through quite nicely for the single single was always on it was to uh, the right of Willett who is at square leg yeah, a bit of hesitation from Grimman but Gajnabi was always coming through so luckily no damage done in the end and driven nicely down the ground doesn't move <laughs> Gajnabi played with confidence and style in fact she waited for the camera after she had played that shot S driven straight and they're driven for four so Gajnabi showing her intent uh, putting the pressure on the bowler putting the pressure on Hector Putting the pressure on the leewards. <coughs> yeah. Slaps into the mid half area, just a single to the left of Kimberly. Gets around and cuts it off. Imagine I'll be stand and deliver type stuff from her so far in this innings. I like the look of her though. She is a positive uh, batter and uh, the no-nonsense player of course prepared to put the bad deliveries away too short. short too short but almost creating a chance but it trickles into the boundary now and Grimman so far both openers getting a life yes that was a difficult one though to will it at square leg uh, she's not the tallest of persons, and uh, she probably got the, her fingertips to it. Well, Grimman will feel a little bit better getting one away. First boundary to her in this innings. Guyana batters are looking very confident though. Yes. And, uh, Third over completed. Guyana 17 without loss. They're certainly, without loss, sorry. They are certainly putting the pressure on the uh, Leeward Islands at the moment. See Makai out there. I do not see uh, Saxena out in the middle. Oh, no, nice so game, to continue. Nice well, they seem to be starting with a substitute fielder. Yes, they did. Saxena seemed to. I've uh, been showing some signs of uh, discomfort while she was batting. Pulled away, not in control, Gajnabi, but manages to get it in the gap. And another boundary. Yeah, let's look at that again. Right, right. Well. Next ball, next ball. She seemed to have timed it well. Timed it well. Got, uh, got herself in a bit of a tangle in terms of her footwork, but managed to get it around square enough get it in that vacant area. Played it well in the end. And, uh, got it away from any of the fielders and got it to the boundary for four. Uh, so runs coming quickly for Guyana. This is a good response. Right away they send that fielder back in the square leg boundary. Walk it into the leg side. 
stifle the pee. That was always great long leg. No Beal, of course, on the bowler. India. I'm looking to go up and over the top, just evading Cheyenne Moses in the middle of boundary. Misjudgment on her part. Didn't get in the catching zone quick enough to take that catch. Yes, so it was it, it was in the air for quite some time. Pretty chance it came in so far from Shabi to Gajnavi. delivery now signal by Claxton by umpire Maria Abbott what a frustration keeping in now you know she's created opportunities but no one being able to hold on to them same battle as well and firmly Cheyenne Moses doesn't attack the ball and the man sees that and come through for an easy single Maxon in fact would have created an opportunity uh, from her very first delivery that she sent down to Gajnavi being dropped uh, uh, Gajnavi being dropped at slips In fact, it was uh, in, in the covers that the, uh, the catch was put down. Well, a shot hit high in the back though, but nowhere near any of the fielders. So Claxton is giving Gajnabi, creating some problems here for Gajnabi, creating opportunities. That occasion, no one close around the bat. Four overs ball, 24 without last time. So Roselle Liebord with the ball in hand. Usually see her as one of the opening bowlers for Leeward Islands. Tonight she's coming in to bowl at fifth over. Can't say it's been a bad strategy so far to use those two opening bowlers. Chances were created, none of them held. Bit of wit offered there from the live world, but Grimman in no position, cut it away, kept low as well. Oh, straight to her, an appeal for LBW, but no, says the umpire. I like to see the replay on that one, maybe there was some bat involved. Look like it missed everything actually, <laughs> or maybe brushing the pad, but the impact would have been outside the off stump. So, a good call by umpire Ayana Holder with offered hit aerially through the hands 
of a leaping um, point fielder. Tall fielder there, just going through the hands. So both of these players quite lucky tonight to still be there. But two runs nonetheless to the Guyana's total. The Guyana's total, sorry. Yes, it was the captain who missed that one. Taking on the part that time, though, it was the captain who missed who that one went over. She's a tall figure. No, that that's the substitute fielder, actually. The captain. Captain is that extra cover. McCoy is at backward Traps point. Bold. This time. Mm -hmm. Gets her reward this time. Liebord should have had her two balls deliveries before. On this occasion, Shanita Grimman has to go playing on. Well, first ball drawn there for the uh, Leewards. And uh, uh, playing it on to the center stump. And uh, uh, she has to go. So, Leewards uh, fighting back, picking up a wicket. Another 79 runs needed. 91 deliveries in which to get these runs. So Rosal Leibold picks up that first wicket. He's been a consistent wicket taker for Leeward Islands. It's pretty slow through the air. I think that was probably the undoing of Shinita Grimman. When they have the pace to work with, got in position to cut. It was very close to her as well. But that movement away from the delivery is what had it chopping onto the stump for Shinita Grimman. Well, of course, the, the, the it was a libel is bowling off spin and she was cutting against the, yeah. the turn. So that delivery to finish things off to the new batter, Mandy Mango. Yes, not a bad delivery. Um, First up. Yeah, so that, that, that was a well thought out over because she bowled a lot of deliveries close to the line of half stump. And Shanita Grimond what couldn't get close enough to execute. So on that occasion, she was probably thinking maybe it's a similar delivery that's coming and give herself some room. And that time, she cramped her. So really good execution from Roselle Leibold. We seem as though we're gonna have a bowling change uh, from the far end. In fact, uh, the emergency fielder seems to be going off. Uh, is she going down to Longon or Thurman rather? So we see shortly if she's going off or if she is. Headed off the field. Uh, let's see if Saxena is back on. Oh, if there's another emergency fielder. Huh? Actually yeah. seeing 10 players on the field for the other yeah, there, 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 there. not sure what happened there. So, Amanda Edwards into the attack. Jim, That's Jim. interesting. Saxena seems to be uh, putting on her boots on the boundary edge. This one is pulled. Cheyenne Moses has some work to do on the boundary. They should come back for two. Easy. It's a bit short there well from well Amanda well Edwards. <coughs> Interesting. The, the emergency fieldman might have picked up some injury. Could only assume so, but I see Saxena preparing.
use of the feet down the ground. She's made really good connection, and that's the first six in this innings of the bat of Shabika Gajnabi. She's one of the batters that use her feet quite well and hit straight really well also. So good start from her from her tonight. Good strong hit over long on for six. Time played well to the covers for straight to well the high board. So over is completed. And after the power play, Guyana, they're 34 for one. The Saxena goes on to the field. Uh, so obviously, she has recovered from whatever stress uh, she might have been in. It's very pretty odd, though, that the Played with 10 players in that over. It didn't seem as if the substitute fielder was carrying any sort of injury. What Saxon is there now? 11 fielders back on the field. Liebord to continue to man the mango. End of the power play 34 for 1 at a similar stage. Leeward Islands were 31 for two. Poland swept to feel at mid wicket. Ibert needs to work some, some more magic here for the Leeward Islands. Guyana replying strongly 35 for one. Use of the feet even along the ground but straight back to the bowler. Angle seems to be backing up a bit too far. But she got back quickly into her crease. <coughs> Timing it quite well tonight. Shabika Gajnabi couldn't find gap on that occasion <coughs> changing the field now long half goes back so the four fielders out cover long off long on and mid wicket swept just for one she's not only timing it well she's really hitting it out <laughs> Number of occasions though straight to the fielders. Swept this time, fine enough, and it beats that fielder at short, fine leg, and crashes into the boundary. So the first four for Mandy Mangro tonight. Good shot. Swept nicely. Kept down. And uh, uh, to the left of the short backward square. Walked into the gap nicely. A single following up that boundary. Brings it over to an end. Seven runs off it. Guyana are 41 for one. Kind of going along quite nicely at 41 for one. And uh, they are in over number seven. And uh, uh, this has been a very good start. Uh, uh, in particular, Gajnabi has been good. She has batted quite well so far. And, uh, she has been timing it well. Uh, it seems to be full of confidence. Yeah, it seems like her role in this team might be to take on the bowlers early and look to go up and over. If that is her role, she's taken to it quite well. Every inning she's tried to play so far, that is how she's gone about it. That's been her approach. Tonight she's 24 of 23 and she'll be looking to take this innings pretty deep. And probably be there till the end for ball. Guyana. So Amanda Edwards, the ball in hand. Have protection now for that sweep shot. 
Mangu Mangu Mandy Mangu play so well. At the start of this innings, uh, for Ghana, I would have said that two key players would be Gaznobi and the captain Shimane Campbell. And so far, Gaznobi has played a good role. Quick single. Get to quite comfortably in the end. Amanda Edward was wary of not throwing that ball. Could have well seen overthrows as she rocketed, rocketed that into the stump. Seems as though uh, these two teams would have taken note of how the other two teams played early run. Nicely to driven down the ground. And the both teams have been uh, far more aggressive in the approach uh, with the batting than the previous, uh, apart from Jamaica, who uh, batted well chasing down a small score, 63 runs. Driven in the company for a single, misfield by Liburn. The cover area. Another change in the field. Cover comes up, long off, goes back. Tries to access that area. Gajnabi. Straight to Liburd. Well done, well done, well done. Ready. Interesting offside field, just four on the off. Over comes to an end. Guyana, 44 for one. She could single, single and later on the tide. So Liburd <coughs> to bowl her third over. From with off on an edge. Chases on for Boyce. Can she pull it back in? No, she can't. So four more runs to Guyana. really struggled after that one and they failed to rope it back in and uh, four more runs getting closer to uh, the uh, 104 runs scored by the Leeward Islands sweeping Pretty straight delivery, but she's quite confident in that sweep shot. Mandy Mango just found her confidence in this tournament. Her last game in the Super 50, she scored runs there 24, in fact. And in the game against Jamaica, she went on to score some runs there as well. So, has grown in confidence and form in this T20 format. So, the field that comes up from the square leg boundary. So they have the right bases covered. Straight a set field for Gajnabi. <coughs> Bondu, Bondu Riders for Gajnabi are in a straighter position. When Mangu is on strike, they have that field out for that sweep shot. They certainly have the right areas covered. Use of the feet looks to go down the ground. Fifty up 
with that single for Guyana. So doing it quite nicely. Run rate is well in check as well. Run rate required. It's well in check. Full delivery played across the line, but I feel he's out there lurking on the square leg boundary, so they'll just do one. There's nothing about the Leeward Islands bowling at the moment to suggest that uh, they're going to pick up a wicket anytime soon. And the two Guyanese batters, they're looking very confident. So a dot to finish out to finish off the ninth over. Fifty one for one, Guyana. The bowling at the moment seems to uh, lack penetration. And what the Leeward Islands need at this point uh, would be uh, some quick wickets. So who can they turn to in this bowling attack from what you've seen of their tournament so far? And you're a local man as well. Don't know if you've been around the, the, the team and the training setup. Well, I've not been around the training. The, the, the problem is not much cricket is being played here. Uh, in the Leeward Islands, in, in St. Kitts in particular. And uh, these girls, they come into the tournament with very little preparation. That's a kick edge from Mandy Mangle. Yeah, it's worth mentioning as well the investment being put in by the Cricket West Indies board for the women. By October, um, they're planning to have each territorial board um, contract six players each. Looking at the sort of franchise system as Gajnabi plays down the ground. So that's the first ever as well for something Boy. similar to what the, man ha the men have right now, being contracted to play, uh, starting with six. So it's a step towards professionalizing the women game. Six of these players will get an opportunity Certainly, one is pulled and well over the tall Shanisha Hector at mid wicket, and they come back for two. Yes, yeah, so certainly, step in the right direction, uh, and uh, really uh, injecting something into the women's game right here, here in the region, perhaps trying to encourage uh, female players also. Good swept and a good grab by Willett. So the sweep shot being the undoing of Mandy Mangro in the end. It was a full delivery. She just couldn't place it past the fielder. Willett who takes a pretty good catch. And that's also a water break for these players. It's a very good catch indeed. Um, she took it low to the ground. Uh, and uh, the breakthrough, you were asking me we could have turned it for a wicket. Uh, I was about to suggest probably the captain would have to uh, try and lead from the front and try and pick up a wicket at this point. And she has done so, but Campbell goes out. And she goes out to partner the inform um, Shabika Gajnabi. And we'll take a water break at this point.
We had a tentative shot there by Campbell. Uh, Davin at one outside the off stump. So Edwards getting an important breakthrough. But this partnership, of course, is a very critical one for Guyana. And he was need to break this as quickly as possible. Campbell off the mark quickly. Single up to mid-off. A successful over there by Captain Amanda Edwards. Picking up that wicket of Mandy Mangu. Guyana, they are 56 for two up to 10 overs. Uh, so we interesting. Uh, it's, it's Will it come in into the attack? Will it took a very good catch just now to dismiss that same batter mango. Gets a chance with the ball now. We have four fielders out for her, long on, long off, cover and mid wicket. Campbell is a new batter in. I think I'll just try to squeeze her a bit. Uh, yes, and we, we let the billet was not bold much um, uh, throughout this tournament. And the, in fact, the uh, Super 50 uh, surprisingly brought into the attack uh, uh, to a new batter. And this is actually her first game in this round of the T20. Didn't feature in the first two games. Better delivery that time. The first delivery um, starting wide of the off stump and uh, being signaled wide. <coughs> That's a good one. Yeah, Slight movement away. Yeah, it's that one to nibble away from the right-handed batter. So the one Islands will be hoping for more of that. Look, it might not have moved as much as it looked from here. Probably Campbell playing down the wrong line. Let Miss Fields to her own ball in a lousy single. Guyana whittling away at this total. Uh, now 58 for two. <coughs> nice flowing drive there by Gasnery down to long on for single. There's a loud appeal. They are confident. The finger of the umpire does not go up, though. That's all that matters. Edward Island certainly confident that that one had taken the edge. Let's look at it again. Umpire holder. Big swing. Yeah, they all went up. Picks her across the line, Campbell. Certainly she must know how important this partnership is. And the required run rate is below six runs per over. This gets an edge this time and that will run away for four. So she still can play some orthodox cricket. Don't need to take a lot of risk at this moment. Still knock the ball around. Put away the bad deliveries. But trying to manufacture a shot at this point in time isn't really called for. Still some responsible cricket should oh. be played. So 63 for 2 after 11 overs. 
Poor work there by Boyce, though. She should have stopped that one and prevented it from going into the boundary. Uh, move rather slowly to a left. And the ball eluding and, and running away to the boundary for four. And now inside, inside. Uh, she has been inside, brought. Inside, inside. inside. Just thinking to myself, yeah. I know it's a very tough position they're in, Leeward Islands, but the only way they're going to win the game is to take the wickets, and this partnership looms as key. They're going now with boys, but that over by Willett, ball pretty well, but I was just wondering if they could have used that opportunity to get maybe Claxton or Hector back in there to Campbell right there. just to see if they could have picked up could have picked up another wicket which would have really put pressure on Guyana uh, yeah certainly and uh, you know uh, like I said it was a bit surprising that they opted to go for Willett with a, a new batter at the crease and you would have thought they would have gone back for one of their strike bowlers right and uh, Campbell gets an easy single down to Langan did manage to beat the edge of the bat twice of Campbell. But just needed need to pick up the wicket of one or two of these batters. If they are to get a chance. Oh again. Straight to Boyce and put down. Boyce herself creating the chance and putting it down. So Gajnabi gets another life tonight. Boyce has been terrible in the field this evening so far. Easy catch. Usually behind the sticks, the gloves on. Use of the feet. Play it across the line. Look for two. It's good running. Get back easily in the end. So, you make a little total. You expected to uh, try and defend it well. You expected to take half chances expected to take your catches we have seen uh, easy chances going down another quick, quick single, single. Here. another quick single taken couldn't <coughs> gather cleanly cracks stand there so they get through easily 68 for 2 after 12 Continue the second over. Yes, all those seven runs came off her first over. Did beat the edge of the bat of Campbell. It's driven firmly by Gajnabi to get one. I wonder though if the keeper can come up to the stumps for Willett. It's not very quick compared to Hector or Claxton just to keep these batters in their crease. In the air, Saxena on it, takes it. It's dropped actually. It's dropped. Another, word. another chance. Another chance created by the Leeward Islands. You can see how frustrated some of the fielders are. Campbell trying to play across the line of that delivery, getting the top edge. And Divya Saxena, who performed so well for the bat to give her, her team a chance, has put down a simple catch of the bat of Shemaine Campbell. My word, I was so certain that she would have taken that one. Uh -huh. Simplest of catches. Wrapped on the pads, paint to peel. So 
So the Leeward Islands are shooting themselves in in the foot, not taking their catches. Uh, there's been a number of opportunities. Within the lack of pace that Willett is operating with is causing a bit of trouble to these batters. They still have to manufacture their own pace to her. This time, ill-directed. And all Campbell had to do was get some bat to it. And she picks up a much-needed boundary for Guyana. Yes, a uh, poorly line delivery. Uh, just on about leg stump. And uh, Campbell just helps it around down to find leg for four. Uh, so uh, Campbell should have been uh, sitting, relaxing back in the pavilion at this point. But um, she's still out there fighting for a team. And uh, drives uh, into the offside for a single. <coughs> so Lee Woods, uh, a poor showing in the field. There's a number of catches catches gone down so far in this innings. Gajnabi given three opportunities. Driven powerfully. That's a wonderful shot, but uh, so it's uh, one oh four for nine leewards and uh, Ghana responding strongly. Uh, seventy six for two. boys to continue put down that catch off our own bowling in her previous over another 29 runs needed from 42 deliveries it's easy single here to gasna be up to long on <coughs> How many? I can't count the amount of times I've seen this. A batter that's put down early and their innings goes on to score heavily. Yeah, there is another shot which uh, uh, brings us uh, another single. Lee was, of course, not very good at defending. Yes, they, they would have won a match against Barbados the other evening defending, but uh, they seem to have an issue defending as this one goes up to Longon for another single. Bowling is not uh, very penetrative. Uh, the Leeward Islands bowling. And this has uh, remained a good uh, track to bat on throughout. They're just milking the singles now, uh, Guyana. Good idea, good idea. Yeah, and since that chance against go, go, go. Boyce, I'm not seeing Gajnabi taking the area route option. Just looking to hit it along the carpet and take a single. The run rate is the required run rate is in check. Some width offered and just landing short of Divya Saxena. So I was just talking about her not taking the aerial, hitting the ball in the air. And she hold on, hold on, hold on. they call that commentator's course. <laughs> yes, but she decided she, to go she, that time. She did play it uh, to the right of Saxino, who uh, made a fine stop diving to her right. It was never really a chance. And uh, uh, this looks like a missed stump in there. Seems so. It's 81 for two after 14 overs. But that delivery that she hit in the air, as you see the missed stumping come up. Yeah, certainly a miss dumping. It was a very wide delivery. There was no one on the cover boundary, but Gajnabi didn't get close enough to it to get any sort of power to get it through the gap or even up and over the infield. It just fell in front of Devia Saxena. So 81 for two after 14 overs. Just required 24 more runs for victory from 36 deliveries. Call for the physio. Um, who's gone out? She seems to be paying some attention to the captain, she mean Campbell. But we 
he probably would be seeing Anthony for the first time from this end. Uh, surprising that she has not moved before. Uh, Willet being chosen ahead of her. So while all this is going on, I'd just like to go back to a conversation we had about, you know, the six franchise players that's going to be selected for their, well, for their franchise by October of this year. They are, uh, you know, I'm very happy to see the direction that the women's game is headed in. You know, lots of opportunities coming, especially for the youngsters, because by 2025, West Indies, they're planning to implement an under-15 tournament, something that the boys have at that level, something that they grow, can grow into. So apart from professionalizing the game, they're also looking at development of the players. That's something to look forward to, to the young girls that's up and coming in the game. It's under-15 tournament. So Kimberly Anthony, Anthony to bowl to Shemaine Campbell. Martin Aaron, of course, and now she is ready. Chicken on the pad, <laughs> and a rather uh, belated appeal there by Anthony. Ball obviously going down leg. See, will it being called inside? Of the circle, so the long on his back, square leg. Campbell is driving back to Anthony. Uh, cover is out sweeping. She has a short third man. Backward point, cover deep, extra cover, mid off, long off. Uh, stays it. Uh, Nicely into the offside. Saxena has some work to do. She has to move to her right to retrieve. And the Campbell picks up a single. Ghana doing it quite easily. No. Good drive. Uh, to the left. Of uh, mid off, will it have some work to do? Uh, just a single. This time it's up in the black hole and dug out there uh, by Campbell. No run. The three fillers out for New Islands. Good stop. Uh, straight back to Anthony. There's two runs coming from that over as well. 83 for two after 15 overs, Guyana. So another five overs left and. Uh, Another 22 runs required. Perhaps at this point, the Leeward Islands, if they could string a few tight overs together, try and uh, push that Askin rate up a bit. Who knows? It might uh, cause the Ghana team to panic a bit. Umpire's just having a bit of a conference. <coughs> Not too sure what that's about. There's that going to be a change of bowler. I think Clark was going to have a ball. Well, the conversation continues with the umpires and <coughs> Clark.
So Rini's boys has a ball in hand. Guyana needs 22 from 30 deliveries. The World Islands have created a number of opportunities tonight, just wasn't able to hold on. Too short, pulled away. Up to mid wicket, just a single. So how about uh, the Leeward Islands trying to build some pressure here? They are not going to build pressure by bowling short though. Steps out, drives it down to Langan for a single. Campbell. And uh, these two, they have settled quite nicely after being given a number of uh, chances. And uh, looking to take it home for Guyana. Easy single once more. This time down to long off. Um, this time it's Gajnabi. And that takes her into the 40s. 40 to be exact. In the air. Taken. This time. I was just thinking that. Why not bring a fielder or two up in the circle? Ask these batters to hit over the, the, the fielder's head. And there you go. Good thinking by Captain Amanda Edwards. Bringing herself in the circle at mid-off. And Campbell right away tries to take her on. And holds out. You heard the spectators on the, on the, on the, on the, in the stand saying, Take this wicket, take this wicket. She got her wish. And Captain Shemaine Campbell walks back. Seven for 17 of 19 deliveries. Three wickets down. <laughs> and, uh, question is it too little too late? But I was saying earlier on if they could apply some pressure. They've gotten a wicket. And if they could apply some more pressure, who knows? But uh, it's uh, Shelly and Fraser who goes to the crease. It's a very aggressive Cherry and Fraser. It's a left handed batter. Amanda Edwards. She goes back on the long off. Long on boundary. Long off in the circle. So just the three fielders out. Long on, as I mentioned, the cover fielder. And a straightish mid wicket. Well, a square ish mid wicket. Just to remind viewers that the uh, target, of course, 105 to win. Uh, the Leeward scoring 104 for 9. And uh, that was never really going to be enough. Defended by Fraser. Up to extra cover no run. Like the fields. Certainly, the Leewards would have had to bowl well and field well uh, to give themselves a good chance of winning this game. Feeling, of course, was quite poor. Uh, quite a number of catches being put down. Uh, some simple ones, a few difficult ones. But then, of course, uh, when you have scored a low total, and you're trying to win, you will have to take everything that come your way. Right, so 19 required from 24 deliveries. Gajnabi is still there. He's key at this point. Leeward Island should be thinking of a way to get her wicket. Plays on a miss. Really was it, it, it can still happen for mm -hmm. them if they if they could pick up the wicket of gas and be here they could um, cause a bit of panic in the uh, Guyanese camp and we have seen teams collapsing after losing uh, one or two wickets they, they they lose them in clumps 
So one never knows. And what the Leeward Islands will need to do at this point is to continue or, or, or at least try to apply some pressure. But Gasnaby remains solid. She drives it down to a uh, long on for a single. And she seems to have settled quite nicely. Um, she, after that last uh, miss there, uh, she seemed to be uh, trying to uh, keep it on the ground. Yes, especially after the loss of Captain Shemaine Campbell. I think in the back of her head, she'll be thinking that she has to see this one home for Guyana. Nicely played there by uh, Fraser for first run. Spatted pretty well, nine away from a half century. Certainly no need to panic if you're in the Guyana dressing room. The Leeward Islands, on the other hand, needs to find a way to apply some pressure. This one hit down to long off. India for some time, but safe. Single. <coughs> to Gajna B. Claxton did all the hard work moving to a left at short extra cover, got both hands to it and floated. it. Yeah, a really big effort from her to run around and get there, but she got there. And she's a quality player, quality fielder, quite athletic. So she'll be disappointed that she didn't hold on to that. Another chance goes down. And certainly the ball left her. The, she, she actually dropped the catch before her body hit the ground. Um, so we can't really say the impact. I uh, forced the ball from my hands, driven back <laughs> uh, to uh, <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> Anthony uh, certainly did everything she can to keep that delivery from passing her. Well, and she did keep it out. Yes. Got both feet together. No room for that to pass through. So it's a new feeling technique. Strong um, case of putting your body on the line. Definitely so. Did a job there for her team though. Kept it to a dot delivery. Four runs off that over. A chance created again. Guyana is 90 for three. Need 15 runs from 18 balls. It's getting pretty close here. All of a sudden, they need 15 from 18 deliveries. Yes, the gap now in between uh, balls and runs. And uh, this is why <laughs> I was saying perhaps the lead Islands need to tighten a bit. To try to string a few uh that deliveries together boys uh is driven into the offside by Fraser for single um, right -hander, right -hander. but the leeward island certainly guilty of not uh taking their catches and we cannot overdo the old adage that catches win matches because it has proven to be uh, a s very sound uh, uh, philosophy over the years. Gazda B is losing a shape here, gets it up to uh, straightish mid wicket. They're back quickly for the second run. Yeah, not a very strong throw. From Cheyenne Moses off the boundary. It's an easy to Gajna be applauding Sherry and Fraser for calling her back to take that second run. So 12 now needed from 16 deliveries. Yeah, yeah. Yes, she's out. She's out. Uh, guess the be a wild swing at one outside the off stump and the Bills were 
quickly taken off, quickly removed there by the keeper. Bashka. Tossed up outside the off some wild swing. In fact, the keeper seemed to have uh, dropped it onto the stumps. Uh, but nevertheless, the, the end result there is that Gaznabi. <laughs> that is a massive wicket. Well, Leeward Islands are starting to believe here. Bernice Boyce <laughs> picks up that very important wicket of Gajnabi. She has a knack of doing that in the game against Barbados. She picked up that important wicket of Kaisia Knight. Here again, picking up another set batter. So is there some drama in this game? 12 runs required from 15 balls. Schultz. That delivery is important here also. Schultz uh, settles. What's the field? Three fielders still out. The onside. It's a quick one there from uh, Boyce. I uh, think I'll still bring in Long On in the circle to Casey Schultz, the new batter. She's driving, looking for single. Uh, throw goes past the non strikers and backed up uh, nicely there by Bashka. The 12 required from 13 deliveries. And uh, certainly getting closer and closer. And we have to bear in mind that uh, teams have been scoring at just over four and so over or less. So who knows? Another dot, and now it's down to a runner ball here. So drama, excitement building. Leeward Islands, they certainly feel like they're back in it. Well, if I was the captain of the Leeward Islands, I, I would be thinking in terms of who could give me a very tight one at this stage. She's gone to Hector. And certainly a good move. One of your leading bowlers, you bring back your leading bowler uh, to bowl this penalty met over. And uh, if uh, the she could be as miserly as possible and, and leave quite a bit uh, for the uh, Guyana team to do in the last over. Let's say um, eight runs or so in the last over, we could be in for a very exciting end here this evening. It's already very, very exciting to me. The fact that for the first time in this match, the run rate is now six runs per over. Four wickets down, including those key batters in Shemaine Campbell and Shabika Gajnabi. This is what I was speaking about earlier, trying to tighten up things a bit and uh, uh, trying to push the uh, required run rate up. We see uh, Claxton loosening up uh, the at extra cover. Perhaps uh, she uh, might be bowling the final over if required. Uh, so are uh, we getting a tanty more finish here this evening? But it's Hector. Swing in the air. One bounce down to Willet. Just a single. So, Fraser is prepared to take on the bowling. This is still a runner ball by these two. So, And the field is still pretty spread. Um, they don't have anybody in that cover area. So, and the fielders are also on the edge of the circle. So just some smart cricket required here by these two batters. And they should see themselves home. Taking on the pad, out like before. My word, right up in the block hole. Taking on the pad. And uh, Schultz goes back, out like before. More drama here at Warner Park. That's a very full delivery. In the black hole, Shanisha Hector picking up that key wicket. Ayana Holder full crashing into middle. And I was just saying, you don't need to try to go big here. It's still in control. The run rate is still pretty much in control. Drop and run can get you home if you are Guyana. So you don't need to look to go big down the ground or across the line. It's the cat among the pigeon at this point. Tension is surely rising here. Kind of panicking a bit, uh, probably. No, uh, it's 11 required from 10 balls. Melissa goes to the crease. This one has all the makings of a classic all. 
It is certainly so. And uh, Ghana, of course, sailing smoothly. Uh, now in troubled waters. Now the captain is deciding. She's, she's brought up long on in the circle <coughs> as well. So two feelers in the circle, the four feelers out. Fine leg, third man, cover, and mid wicket. Perhaps mid wicket should be uh, saving the one also. So another Sorry. miss. So another duck delivery by Ashmini, <coughs> by um, Shanisha Hector, who has a pep in her step, walking back to her run up. Even Island sensing something, you know. Now it's up to seven. Over seven runs per over for the first time in this match. How much would uh, Claxton have to defend? And I suspect that she's going to bowl the last over. Hector once more. Uh, this one is played uh, down to mid off for a single left field and uh, uh, send a return there to the keepers. Then, but the, the Leeward Islands fielders have to be careful here, though. Um, they cannot afford. Uh, overthrows at this point. <coughs> yes, so Munisa is off the <coughs> mark. And that's what I've been saying. The feelers are still pretty deep on the circle. There's some soft hands and it will see you picking up a single if you are the guy on a team. Ten from it. The words would be hoping for a wicket here now. Guyana would be looking for a boundary. Swing in the air. Hector gets on the takes the catch. And the Fraser is on the way. So the wicket comes, not the boundary. This is really unbelievable scenes if you're viewing this. Guyana, who had themselves in a position to win this game, all of a sudden, Leeward Islands all over them. Shanisha Hector picking up two wickets in that over. Ashmini Munisa, now Naya Lachman joins her. Two very young batters. How are they going to play this one out? One more ball remaining in the over. Two wickets, two runs so far. One more delivery, Shanisha Hector has come up trumps for the Leeward Islands. Well, this certain has woken up the small crowd on hand. Do have a match on hand here. Yeah. It's captivating stuff here at Warner Park St. Kitts. You cannot script it, cannot script cricket like this. Guyana, they were cruising the game. All of a sudden, Rini's boys. Picking up that key wicket of Gajnabi. Now Hector with two wickets in this over. Question Naya is Latchman on strike. One more ball remaining. Question is who can hold the nerve here? Full in toss. Yeah, full toss, a single. <laughs> so nine needed from the last over. And the Claxton removes the hat. And she's going to bowl the final over. Naya Lachman is on strike as well. Ashmini Munasa is having a very long chat with her. They require a boundary at some point in time. It's up to nine runs and over. Or at least a two or three somewhere. Eight runs for a super over. Nine runs to win it for Guyana. Well... Rest on the uh, shoulder of uh, Claxton. I think no, that fielder out on the cover boundary. I think Amanda should bring her in the circle. We've seen Naya Latchman, she got a full delivery of the last ball. She wasn't able to get any sort of power to put it away. So cut that single out. She looks to go across the line. Luckily, there's a loud appeal. Ashmini Munisa gets on strike. I think of the two batters out there that they'll want Ashmini Munisa on strike. Well, she's on strike now. And uh, Claxton, of course, would have to uh, try and uh, take some deep breath and uh, try and bowl a good line and length. This is not uh, the time for wide deliveries, for extras. She would have to keep it honest, wide. So wide of the off stump and signal wide. Seven now from five. 
But you see the plan from, from, from Claxton. She's trying to take it away from the swinging arc of the batters. She's trying to keep it. There you go. If she had gotten that in line, could have been a dot delivery. Unfortunately, just too wide from Claxton. Risky but you delivery. certainly see the plan. Risky delivery, though, going that wide. Yeah, and the field is well set for it as well. There's a player at third man and one on the cover boundary. It's pulling across the line. There's a huge appeal to get a single. Good call there by uh, Latchman. Calling through a partner for a single. Uh, but singles are not going to hurt the leewards. In fact, there is an appeal for that one. And uh, uh, interesting. Keeping a bit low too. Six required from four deliveries. Naya Latchman on strike. Diana could do it uh, an educated edge here for four. Driven. Makes connection. Fielder can't hold on well. So to get through for a single. Five from three deliveries. It's up to ten runs and over ten runs now. Well, just a boundary and a single. Now where is this boundary option coming from? I'm not sure either of these two batters has have the power to go up and over Amanda Edwards at or Shanisha Hector. That's an option for them or even the boys at mid wicket. Bold! <coughs> My word! On a good leg, nipping back into the right handed batter and knocking back the off stump. My word! Ah, uh, really good delivery there by Claxton. Look at it again. Leaping back and taking back the off stump. Very good delivery indeed there by Claxton. So this Leeward Islands outfit well led by Amanda Edwards. They have the belief now. Two deliveries remaining. Five, ball, five runs to get. Guyana, where can they get a boundary? Well, a very critical delivery coming up now. The uh, penultimate uh, delivery of this over. As Claxton has held her, no, held her nerve well in this over. There was a wide. Just four runs coming off that over. Two of which were leg buys. So, uh, the new batter, Millington. Take on the pad, in fact, goes on to the stumps. She's out bold. My word. The leewards are cock a hoop. They're all over the place. They're rolling in the grass. They're excited. This is magnificent. This is brilliant cricket by the Leeward Islands to come back in this game the way they have. It's not over yet, though. They still require five of one delivery. And if this young batter is able to get four here. It will be a super over. But Jazara Claxton, she's pumped up. She's confident. She's going to get the job done. And she's also on a hat-trick. Yes, yeah, she's on a hat-trick. And this has been a magnificent comeback here uh, by the Leeward Islands. And uh, on a hat-trick is uh, Jazara Claxton. Four needed here for a super over. Uh, Guyana. And uh, <laughs> perhaps, yes, the, the, the Leewards do have it covered. There's a fielder on the third man boundary. There's one on the fine leg boundary. There's one at square leg. There's one at cover. Uh, what they do not want at this point is to give her a boundary. Uh, so they seem to have it uh, well covered in terms of boundaries. Perhaps, too, they could, uh, let's see, this one, two, three, four outside of the circle. Perhaps they could send back the uh, mid on or mid off. But one delivery to go. Uh, five runs needed. Four for swoop over. Claxton from the far end. On a hat trick. Comes in now. And balls! Gets a hat trick. My word! <coughs> My word, the Leeward Islands coming from behind and winning. 
and Josara Claxton picking up a hat trick. What a tremendous victory here for the Leeward Islands. Believe what you're seeing on the TV screen, ladies and gentlemen. The Leeward Islands are telling you that first, that first win was no fluke. They are here for a contest and they have picked up their second victory in this T20 Blaze. Young Josara Claxton picking up a hat trick. Amazing scenes here at Warner Park, St. Kitts. The fans that stuck around this surely got a treat tonight. Oh, yes, and certainly when the news gets around uh, St. Kitts, I'm pretty certain that we'll see uh, much more fans here when the Leeward Islands are playing. And certainly this has been a, a tremendous effort by the Leeward Islands. They dropped a, a quite a number of catches, but in the end, uh, they uh, stuck to the task and... Uh, Put the squeeze on the Ghana team. And once they had picked up some critical wickets, uh, they were able to tighten the noose and defeat Ghana. What a victory. This should certainly, this is certainly a tough loss for Guyana. I'm pretty sure at the halfway mark, or even by the 16th over, a lot of people had already written the Leeward Islands off, but not the Leeward Islands. They stuck in it. They had belief. They were well led by their captain. She made a lot of great decisions tonight. And they, uh, they have pulled off a victory out of nowhere. So we look at the hat trick once more. Claxton. Pulls from the uh, thigh pad. Once more she's knocking back stumps. This time the off stump. And uh, the final one, pulled out. So all three bold. That that's brilliance by Jazara Claxton. All of delivery, all of the deliveries within that same area, she executed well. Bold the first player decided, I'm just gonna stay there. So that is pretty simple, basic cricket by young Jazara Claxton, and she pulls off a victory for her team tonight. So congratulations to Leeward Islands pulling off a victory against the guy and the woman. Yes, and congratulations to them also. And certainly we had uh, a, a good last match, an exciting last match. And uh, 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 certainly uh, the day ended quite well. Uh, for us, we saw something exciting here in the booth. And the Leeward Islands uh, uh, getting their second victory in this year's tournament. And certainly uh, they would be uh, buoyant. Uh, going into the next match. This has been an enthralling day's cricket here at Warner Park St. Kitts. Do join us on Saturday for the fourth round here in the Cricket West Indies Women's T20 Blaze.